<laughs> Hi, okay. everybody. It's Friday. We're back to Fun Facts Friday. We have some good topics for you today. Today is Friday, April 17th. And today is Cheese Ball Day and National Haiku Poetry Day. Didn't you know that? Everybody go get your cheese balls today? Did you eat your cheese balls today? Well, I ate some cheese, but it wasn't a ball. <laughs> I, have, I had some cheese today, too, so I guess we'll just say National Cheese Day instead of Cheese Ball Day. Yeah. A cheese omelet. Okay. So, Darcel, what do you have for cheese? What do you have that was cheese today? We're working on enchiladas as we speak. Okay. So, mm. see, so you're about to have some cheese. So, see, we all, yeah. we all participated. The yeah. enchiladas sound good, though. What kind of enchiladas you make? Oh, <laughs> Chicken, chicken lime enchiladas. Mm. Mm. Okay, so yeah. yeah. Tell Daphne I want some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Okay, all of us like, mm, we must be hungry. It got real quiet. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so also on up, uh, we we lost one of our co-hosts. She'll be back. Yeah. So. Today is also something that the Ford company did today that was a major turning point in their company. Can anybody guess what that was? Ford Motors Company did on April uh, 17th. You know, I didn't hear about that. Well, April remind 17th, me. I, I... 1964. Oh. 1964? Uh huh. April 17, 1964, the Ford company did this. It was a major what turn. Are you born? But you should know about this. What is this? What happened? What they, they, officially, they officially unveiled the Ford Mustang. I was about to say the Ford Mustang. <laughs> the like, Ford <laughs> Mustang was officially unveiled in 1964 in Flushing Meadows, New York. And that same day, the new car also debuted in showrooms across America, and almost 22,000 Mustangs were immediately snapped up by buyers that wow. day. Yeah. Yeah. And it's people, still very popular. Like, yeah, exactly. The Ford Mustang is still a car people will buy right now. It's, it's an iconic brand, American muscle car. I mean, okay, it's, so. It's almost a synonymous with America. It's. <laughs> American cars are probably the F-150, the Corvette, uh, and the Mustang. Now, would you say, so the Ford Mustang's the only car, you said, and then the F-150's truck. Would you, can you name any the other? Corvette. But Corvette Chevy, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So as far as Ford, can you think of any other cars that, like, when you hear Ford, that you would automatically think of besides Mustang? GT. Cars. Ford GT. What did you say? Ford GT. Um, the no. if you got a chance to watch that new movie, that well, not mo new anymore, but it just came out. Ford versus Ferrari. Yeah, I didn't get it to watch it. The, it highlighted the Ford GT. Okay. Um, which uh, was a, is is an awesome car. They just came out with a new one not too long ago. Um, but it is Ford's was Ford's entry into uh, the European racing scene. So, yeah, very iconic, has a great story. If you haven't got a chance to watch that movie, good, it's great entertainment, and it does have a lot of automobile history. And it also highlights uh, Carol Shelby, which was actually one of the, one of the most iconic American automakers that, we ever, that we've ever had. I can't think of any of the fours are. Mom, you said something. She was Taurus. Saying, oh, the Ford Taurus. Ford Taurus, yeah. I have some <laughs> memories with the Ford Taurus breaking down on the road. And yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a memory for a Taurus. Yeah. A lot of people did have the it Taurus, though. The Taurus and the, and the Taurus wagon. Right. Taurus wagon. Ford. <clears throat> Escort. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Escort, yeah. Everybody, everybody yeah. growing up, Escort everybody. Was another one. Ford Escort. Yeah. So let's see. So we'll skip this one. I'll let Sissy come back. We're trying to find the video. Get the video for that one. So 
with the whole, we try not to have a lot of conversation about the coronavirus in here, but <laughs> this is fun fact. We want fun stuff. It's going to be exciting and give us right. a break right. from dealing with we'll all the coronavirus. Right, enough of this on the news, the radio, everywhere. But one thing that we, I am going to mention, let's see, people talk about having water and disinfecting things and staying clean. What is one item that you can use to disinfect your water in an emergency situation? There she is. Can you see me now? Yes, we see you now. Okay. We hear you too. You hear me too? Yep. So the question on the table is, what is an item that you can use to disinfect water in an emergency situation if you can't boil it? Salt. No, not salt. Any other is Chlorine. Chlorine? No, you. Okay, well, well let's say let me let's say this. Pool. Let's say a household item, because unless you have a pool, you don't just have pure chlorine sitting around. So a household item. That you can use to disinfect the water. Bleach? Okay. It is. It is bleach. It is bleach. But you got that. Be, be very careful. Look like you, you look to the side and got, got some help on that. What'd you say? Uh oh. Look like he got some help on that answer. Yeah, because I did see him looking to the side. What can we use? What can we use? I know. <laughs> No, I wasn't looking for I wasn't looking for help. What I, I was chlorine. I first said chlorine. <laughs> yeah, okay. you did. You did. You said chlorine. So, but you have to be very careful. Okay, there you go. See your screen. You have to be very careful when you share when you put the chlorine in there because it's only eight right. drops. Eight drops of household bleach to one gallon to disinfect it. So eight drops doesn't mean like, oh, I'm gonna pour it in like eight shots so just eight right. drops otherwise you might be disinfecting more than you really trying to disinfect and be dead like yeah. eight drops from uh eyedropper well, yeah like a eye drop eye drops are drop eight of those wow. eight of those to a whole gallon of water to disinfect so that's wow. a good camping trip i guess if you go camping or something take some bleach with you you could disinfect the water Lady, come back up here. So, okay, Sissy, you have the video. We'll go to that one. You can you see it? Yes. Oh, look at that little picture. Is it little? We can see it. You can make it full screen. We can see it. I just so there's no, this, go ahead. There's this story, and these people were raising a dog, but it turned out that it wasn't really a dog. It was a bear. So let's play the video. Who are these people? <laughs> Let's play the video. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was a family in China. They thought it was a Tibetan Mastiff puppy. This is the puppy after two years. You see, it's no longer a puppy. They say they found two buckets of noodles and a box of... You can tell he's domesticated. He's peeling the orange. He's been domesticated, yeah, because he's peeling the orange. <laughs> it took him two years, though, to realize that this dog was a bear. <laughs> Who are these people? <laughs> they were in China somewhere. They turned over the puppy to the authorities. This big old puppy. They thought he had. He was saying, Rawr. he wasn't and, saying, rough, rough. See, that's, that's my question, lady. <laughs> you my you question. can't look at that and tell it's not a bear. No, you can tell it is a bear, not a dog. This right here, this is a dog. See that sign? That's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> it's little. That, you know, that we just there, where is there a picture that shows oh, yeah. what dog they thought they had? They thought it was a Tiberian Husky. So let Which me find like what I do. I'm, I'm gonna show you a picture of a Tibetan husky. Was a husky? Or I don't know what it was called, but it was a Tibetan something. So the dog, the one on top is the dog. The one on the bottom is the Asian black bear that they're saying they have. So 
I guess they could have got confused. Like that. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't want a dog that looks like that either. But this is the dog <laughs> that they thought they had up top, and this is the bear that they actually had. So I guess a little tiny bit. This I don't know. The have. dog looks almost like a lion to me with all that hair where the around his face. Right. right, right, right. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think two years though. But like, he never said, never said. Woof, woof. Woof. Hey, two years, he never barked. That's what oh. I wait for. Well, I guess growl? they thought it was a. Did it growl? Where did they get the animal? <laughs> they adopted it as a puppy. It was just walking around and. Because it so was hairy. You telling me there was a bear just walking around the neighborhood chilling, looking for a honey it, pot? And they picked it up and took it home as a puppy. <laughs> but you said it's a Siberian husky? Tiberian. Tiberian well, husky. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know. That's I can't. I can't with these people nowadays. <laughs> but that's almost like what's that show? The the tiger something? What's the new show, Tiger uh, King or something? Yeah, that's the new show. I don't know show. about people watching that either. I haven't watched <laughs> it, but isn't it about people raising these exotic animals and stuff? Yeah, that's oh, what yeah. they said because um, I think um, Shaq um, paid into something. He's a part of that. Well, he was. Hey, Pink. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> you said Shaq was a part of that? Raising the crazy animals? Oh, she talking to the internet. Hi. Hi, welcome. You better watch the world. <laughs> she's driving, huh? Yeah, yeah she's driving. driving. There she go. Oh, Lord, I'd be afraid of her. Yeah, she's driving and joining us. Just yeah, make sure you pay attention to the road, because we go act like we didn't see you. <laughs> <laughs> I got no. you here, sitting in the dashboard. You hear? She said we're sitting in the dashboard. Okay, okay. So but she, wait. Go she, ahead. She, she she just decided to join us before she got run off because you know I want to introduce you guys. That is um, Zaya Flyer Girl. Oh, she going to a plane? No, <laughs> no. She has that um that active clothing line. That's why I was like, uh, what does the Body and soul got to do with exercising. Okay. Uh, okay. So, what does it have to do with exercising? Well, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Well, there was one more comment. You said Shaq, so we could finish this one. You said Shaq is part of that Tiger King raising exotic animals? Yes. But he's not anymore after some stuff went down. We can't say it on here, but some stuff went down, right? You're not supposed to be on those kind of shows anyway. Huh? You, we're not supposed to be on those kind of shows anyway. We mean, so, yeah, we but, mean it like everybody yeah. that looks like me on this on this screen right now. We none of us that look like us on this screen. <laughs> what we look like? We're not supposed to be on those kind of shows with exotic animals <laughs> as pets. No, but you know, okay. <laughs> So yeah. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. She's gonna bring us back home. <laughs> no, I wanna I wanna bring up the case of all the accidents that have been happening since the COVID nineteen. Is ah. less less cars on the road. So I think people figured they could watch TV while they drive and do all kinds of stuff while they drive it. Because it's not many cars out there. Me. That's why the accident. She used in her virtual background, huh? Right, right. Yeah, okay. She got a virtual front to her. <laughs> got a virtual stairwell. It's a nice looking ride though. I saw some leather seats. Okay. <laughs> Wood grain steer wheel. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> so, who does, right. you said, what does mind, body, and soul have to do with exercise? So, 
How is it all connected? Yeah. Hello? You asking me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it's like I said last night. Um, especially right now when people are really stressed because they're dealing with everything that's going on around their life, their family, COVID-19. Exercise helps to kind of get your mind off of stuff. So that's the one key element that um, exercise plays with your mind. For your body, it just, you know, depending on whether you're on elliptical, treadmill, uh, doing weights or whatever, exercise is good for the body. You're getting yourself in shape. You're keeping yourself in shape. As we get older, it's good to have um, our bodies moving and doing things that we did when we were 20. Um, now that we're over, uh, let's say, 50. Um, <laughs> yes, exactly that. My, my neighbor actually was telling me how she needs to have her husband just twist his ankles around so his feet don't become um, debilitated. So exercise is in your body. And then for your soul, it just, for me, um, I run. So running releases endorphins. It just makes me feel good. I feel joyful when I'm running, when I'm doing exercise, when I've completed a workout. I just feel good. So exercise is definitely something that everybody should be doing. You know, no matter how big or how small, everybody needs to do it for their mind, their body, and their soul. And Zaya Activewear is the perfect clothing line to be wearing when you're doing all this stuff because it feels good on the body, it moves well when you're doing your exercises, and it washes well because you don't have to wash it and hang it out, but it also um, is a clothing line that you can wear outside of just exercising. I actually have a Okay, good, because I was about to ask if I have to be exercising to wear it. <laughs> no, no. Actually, oh, okay. a lot okay. of people <laughs> buy our clothing line just because they like how it feels. Yesterday, I had on a whole outfit that I wore to work and nobody could even tell. It was a stall. <laughs> where do you get it? Where do you get it from? How can you we get, get them from me? You can contact me um, on through Facebook, Zaya Fly a Girl, and it's Z Y I A F L Y A Girl. C I R L. But if that's too hard, you can just call okay. now. She'll give you my number. You know, I can give you my number if you want to write it down. Oh, that's wait, on, hold on, hold on, no, wait, no, hold on no, one no, second. No. Cause, cause listen, be listen, listen, I'm exercising. I'm exercising right now. See my finger on my mouth? Yes. yes. I'm exercising. Uh, and let me tell you why that's good. Because when you go no to work word. on Monday, you need to have your fingers working. <laughs> so go like this so you practice moving the mouse. Keep your wrist up. Go like this. Keep your wrist up. <laughs> Even this. Of eating lotion. Yeah. Hey, that's exercise. Yeah, see, that's kind of exercise I've been doing. See, we need to get off this in <laughs> shelter at home. Because that's the kind of exercise I've been doing lately. Is that fork right here? Yeah. yeah. Elbow action. And that's <laughs> too much. Fine, but you got to get the rest of the body moving too. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> So well, what I forgot to say, Nell, Nell is actually going to have an online Zaya party. Huh? And she oh, can tell you more about that. Oh, it sounds like she didn't know that. about that. You just, she just found out about this? Look. She just found out about but this? But <laughs> if I do it, do all my people get um, a percentage off? Huh? Do they get a percentage huh? off? <laughs> You know, we always looking for the deal. We always looking for the deal. She's like, what? I can't She's going into a I'm not That's what I'm about to be a topic. Why does everybody always look for that deal? Oh, yeah, but here's the thing, though. She started going to the In the online party, I'm going to have deals that come up. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, so if you're funny. participating in the online party, there are deals that will come up on different days. You just got to be actively participating in the party. So okay. you, you won't miss the deal. Wait a so minute. You come up. different days. I only yes. got one what? day to exercise. I only exercise one day a week. Okay. That's all right. What's, What's your size range? One day. What's your size range? Your size range. 
from zero to 20. Is that U.S. sizes oh. or U.K. Yes, those sizes? those are U.S. sizes. Okay. U.S. sizes. <laughs> and for the most part, the sizes are true to what we normally wear. There are a few pieces that you need to size up or size down just because of the material that's used um, for making them. But for the most part, it's the actual size that you wear. Uh, okay. okay. So can I say this? Right now, yes, you yes. said those are the normal sizes. Right now, none of us are our normal size. Yeah, so we're all said, shelter at home sizes right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What's Why don't you go ahead and give that website one more time for us, please? Absolutely. What? What's so, that? On Facebook, you oh, yeah. can find me you. at Zaya Fly a Girl which is Z-Y-I-A-F-L-Y-A-G-I-R-L. Okay. Is that the same on Instagram? Or you Instagram? could use... Hi, girl. Do you have Instagram? Hi, girl. Hi, girl. I am on Instagram with that same name. Okay. I actually have a website. You can shop at. It's myzaya.com slash ZayaFlyaGirl. MyZaya.com slash Zaya Fly Girl. Okay. That is yeah. it. You get it? Fly Girl? I was just singing it. Fly Girl. Fly Girl. Fly Girl. Fly girl. Fly girl. All right. Okay, Let's not you. So. Hands on the wheel. Right. You don't <laughs> dance, Fly Girl. Hands on the wheel. We need you to keep driving. <laughs> we don't want you flying away. Yeah. <laughs> right. You're right. That's so much fun. Right? I love this. I want to know what party. I want to know what are you driving with uh, with that long old um, sunroof? Oh what my is gosh, that? you can see that. Yeah, um, so see in your family, she and your family, Pastor Melba. What is it? Is it oh, no, Yeah. Yes, I have an X5. It's what I always wanted. Is that the five? Okay. Yeah, so, but here's the thing. Mine is the Mama 5. It's not the Baby 5. The Baby 5 is the 5 that just came out a couple years ago. Right. I the old <laughs> we okay. can afford the new one. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in the market. You can't afford the new one. I'm checking it out. I'm checking it out. I'm in the market for a new one. No, I love it. I do. I love BMWs, though. I have for since I had my own car. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. so good. Right, so, so what's the next topic? <laughs> no, wait a minute. Is that? Oh, I'm sorry. Look, I'm looking outside. It's a lot of ladybugs. Um, ladybugs you know out on your flowers. I see some ladybugs. I haven't seen a flowers. ladybug yet. Wow. Yeah. I need to get some more flowers. Yeah, ladybugs are it. great for my garden. I just picked up a couple and put them in my garden. Yeah, they really? sell them. It's so abundant. Well, you know, everybody, all the insects, all the birds, all the animals are confused right now because <laughs> right. of the, the way the weather is changing. Mm. Right. Signs so, of the time. Yeah, yeah. My daughter will be they know it global warming. Global warming. Okay, we all confused. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this much. And welcome to my world. Welcome to my world. <laughs> Did you what's know what's special about the ladybugs? Yeah, what's special about the ladybugs? Because you see all those ladybugs, what they doing? What they you see yellow spots around them? Mm. You know why ladybugs leave yellow spots around them? Anybody? No. No. No, I do not. Ladybugs as for a defense. They will just excrete a yellow, foul smelling, it's a hemolymph something. They're going to excrete a fluid from their leg joints, from their knees, and it'll leave yellow stains on the surfaces below. It's when they get startled or when they get scared. So basically, I guess it's almost like if somebody scares you, like if somebody scares you, makes you pee your pants, I guess they pee from their knees because they leave a yellow stain. <laughs> Right. So they get weak at the knees, huh? Yep, they get weak at the knees and they excrete a foul smelling hemolymph and it'll seep from his leg joints, leaving yellow stains. 
And it says that that's because the predators, the mix of the smell and stuff, it'll repulse the predators away. And then somehow all of us have a defense so mechanism. So did you ever think that yeah. ladybugs had um, knees? I never looked that close to a ladybug. So you know I, what we're going to have to do? I guess we're going to go and get us one of those kits. And what, we're going to examine this. Like they used to have in a, in school. What did you say? What'd you say? Exactly. What'd you say, Darcelle? Don't kill it. I heard bees had these. Bees. 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 bees you think, bees. About, think about it though. If anything walks, they have to have a knee. <laughs> but you know what? That's probably why they say you the bees knees. Now we're gonna think twice about things. Look, me. Did somebody say you the bees knees? Uh, People say we really are. I've never bees. heard that saying before. You the bees knees. You the business. So they say, they say you the stinky part. I know, right? Okay. I know, right? Okay. Another question about ladybugs, interesting fact about ladybugs, is that their color is on purpose. They are red and black because insect eating birds and other animals, they learn to avoid meals that are red and black, and they're more likely to steer clear from them. I guess because the red and black could be poison or yeah. they could be bleeding or sick, and so they'll stay away from it. So the color helps them be protected. Right. You have heard that one? Yeah, definitely. Uh, in nature, most of the things, you, you think of like a black widow, the mm -hmm. marking of the black widow is red. Uh, in nature, most things that are red are usually poisonous or dangerous. And so it was some way. Um, what do you call it? The stuff that you stand under during Christmas and you get a kiss from your significant uh, other? The mistletoe. Oh, mistletoe. mistletoe. Those are actually poisonous. Mistletoe. Yeah, mistletoe. Uh, so that's, that's, the berries on that are red. Uh, hmm. And those are actually uh, poisonous. So you want to avoid that. Uh, avoid eating those. Uh, that's some. Um, how you say that the mistletoe is poisonous but it wants you to get closer and kiss somebody. So does that mean that love could be poison because you kissing somebody under the poisonous mistletoe? I guess if you with the wrong person, it could be poison. <laughs> oh, wow, you know what? That reminds me of something I just read too. There was this man and this happened in, it said 1978. There was a man who, um, his wife went in the hospital uh -huh. and he ended up dying from starvation because he wouldn't eat anybody else's cooking but hers because he was afraid that somebody would poison him. So he just wouldn't eat at all. He just stayed in the hospital. I mean, stayed, yes, yeah, stayed sitting in the hospital for her, with her and he ended up dying of starvation. Why did she bring some food? He wouldn't eat anything else because she was sick. She couldn't cook him nothing. Oh, it, she was in the hospital. He was in the hospital. She was the one that was sick. Oh, okay. But he stayed there with her, waiting for her to get well. But in the meantime, he dies of starvation because he wouldn't eat anybody else's cooking but her. That's truly loving you to death. I'm going to love you till my death or your death. Whoever died first, I'm going to love you and be right here with you. That's yep. well, You know, know when you do your vows, they say to death do you part. So Right. Yeah, that's and that happened in 1978. It wasn't like that was a long time ago. No, that's his deep. name was Kirk, Kirk Goldel, G O D E L. If you want to look it up, it's a true fact. Wow, yeah, that's some kind of love, right? <laughs> that's what, what I'm thinking because I'm like, what you have told food. him to make him not want to eat anybody else's food. <laughs> <laughs> Did they ever catch you eating some other wolf's food? Right. That's some serious love. Like you can't even not even a rest. That means he didn't even want to eat at a restaurant, no fast no. food, nothing. No. Nope. Wouldn't even eat the same food she ate, I guess. Because yeah. she was eating the hospital food. She didn't make it. But at the same time, that says a lot for her. That means she was cooking every day. Yeah. Cooking enough yeah. to, to know how bad she cooked. 
But, but if she was cooking bad, I guess it didn't matter if it was good or bad. It was her, so he yeah. wasn't gonna touch nobody yeah. else. He, he has nothing to compare it to. I better be careful. You know, every <laughs> once in a while, my husband act like he won't eat if I'm not cooking some homemade food. Well, you better keep <laughs> cooking. I, I don't think I doubt that he's gonna let himself starve though. Right. That's <laughs> right. That's that's what, that's my point. At some point. Didn't he get like hungry enough to say, "Okay, I'm just gonna eat a cracker to survive" or something? Like, evidently not. So did she die too, or did he end up? Now he died of starvation. Did she end up dying, or did she get better and leave the hospital? Did it say? It didn't say. It didn't say. It just said he died of starvation. Yeah. Better start cooking for somebody else because he wouldn't eat anybody else's food. That's some kind that's of love. That's, that's crazy. Crazy. wow. That's yeah, deep. That's, <laughs> that's that crazy that's love. love. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh. Yeah, that's some love. Okay. Okay. What's these poems y'all was talking about? Because in poems, I never heard of that kind of poem you was talking about. A haiku, haiku? poem? Yeah, haiku poem you said or something? A haiku poem. It's a haiku. Haiku. I got what one. language is that? Chinese, Japanese, I believe. Haiku poem. Okay. It's a short form. You're a. Hey, you know what? You're pretty. Not you. Actually, a little smarter than you look. You say haiku. Oh, I'm a lot smarter than I look. <laughs> <laughs> haiku <laughs> is a short form of Japanese poetry in three phrases, typically characterized by three qualities. So here's an example of a haiku poem. An ocean voyage, as waves break over the bow, the sea welcomes me. The end. <laughs> it's only three phrases. That's a short haiku poem. Yeah, I think it's, it has to be, I think the first line is like five syllables, and then the, seven, the second line, it has to be seven syllables, and then it's the like, third line yeah. is five or something like that. Is it either three, five, and three, or it's five, seven, and five? Like the rules. Let's see. I was trying to find well, the rules. Yeah. The words all together. It's all of that puts it together. Yeah. You're, five syllables, seven syllables. So five syllables. The first one again. So what's well, the first one? What first was the word? Line, first line is five syllables. The second line is seven syllables. What did it say? No, what say the, say what you said. Oh, I don't remember. I went away from that. Oh. But it's the first line is five syllables. The second line is seven syllables. The third line is five syllables. So five, seven, five. So here's another one. Refreshing and cool. Love mm-hmm. is a sweet summer rain that washes the world. I didn't make it up. I'm just reading it off the paper. Refreshing and cool. Refreshing and cool. Love uh, is a sweet summer rain that washes the world. Yep. What'd you say? You never had to write haikus in high school? Man, you know that was so long ago. When you know, from the time I was in, from the time I was in school, elementary and junior high to now, though, you know, I done burped some memory seals. I don't remember. Yeah, you you know. You say that. Well, well, well. We we we're not gonna talk about the burning of the cells. <laughs> I need to take some more naps because you know naps. They say the naps can replenish your memory, your thinking, and stuff. So I need to make sure I start taking the right amount of naps to keep replenishing my brain cells. Well, you know, I believe in naps. I believe in naps too, and it's a true fact though. So I'm gonna share you some right here. There is a certain length of nap that does different things for you. A six-minute nap enhances memory function. So I need to take a bunch of six-minute naps to increase my memory. (laughs) Ten to 15 minutes is the sweet spot for improved focus and productivity. So like during your day, you need to focus some more. Take a little 10, 15-minute nap. You have better focus and be ready to be more productive. Okay. 20 to 30 minutes, according to NASA, great for peak performance and alertness. 
It also sharpens your motor skills. Mm. A 40 to 60 minute nap boosts your brain power, stimulates creativity, and improves memory and learning ability. So wait a minute, I don't wanna take a six minute nap. I wanna take one between 40 and 60 minutes because that improves your memory and learning ability. Okay. And then a 90 to 120 minute nap, so that's an hour and a half to two hours, boosts creativity and emotional and procedural memory. Yeah, that's what I had today. Which is important in learning new skills like learning to ride a bike. So when you learn uh, something, if you're really studying something and you learn something, go take a nap so that your brain can process it, but take like a 90 minute nap <laughs> so your brain can process the learning and all the new skills and categorize it in your brain and then wake up and you'll be better off. Okay. okay. We're going to take this to our bosses. If I take a two hour nap, uh-huh. Hey, get back up. <laughs> <laughs> You take a two hour nap, think about it. If you take a two hour nap I would go in the day, you take a two hour nap around, and they say one to three o'clock is the prime time to take a nap in the middle of the day. So you take a nap from one to three, that's two hours. You wake up, you're ready to go the rest of the day until about eight, nine o'clock when it's time to go to sleep. But don't take a you nap know, at 6 p.m. So is that why some countries have what they call a siesta that's during that, that time? That's, That's exactly what I was gonna say. Are. There's countries they have a work. It's mandated in their work day yep. that you go and you take a nap, and then you come back to work after. Yep, and they probably only take a thirty minute nap because thirty minutes says it's great for peak performance and alertness. So they probably send their employees go take a yeah. nap so you can come back and keep working and be refreshed. I do. I take a nap at lunchtime. Yeah, right. Yep. Huh. If I take a nap in the middle of the day, I'm not going back to work. <laughs> exactly. You know, but that might not be good for people who wake up grumpy. Because they don't take a nap. But see, if you wake up grumpy, there's also a point where it says that you should not take a nap, especially in the middle of the day, longer than that nap during the middle of the day should stay on this side over here between that six and 30 minutes. And if you go past that, start getting into, trust me, I like to sleep, so I've looked it up and studied it for real. And then you go into a different level of sleep. And so then you end up waking up and you're more tired than the feeling refreshed and the alertness you get by going to 30 minutes. Once you start going past 30 minutes, your brain goes into a different level of sleep, and that's why you'll be grumpy and it'll be harder to keep going. No, no, this is contradicting itself then. Because, see, I'm over here to the right in the 40 to 60. I'm trying to boost my brain power. <laughs> now, you're saying you're going to need to take a lot of that. Huh? You're going to need to take a lot of that. I didn't have to. <laughs> 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 She got jokes. She got jokes. Because I love you. I love you too. Yeah. Yeah, I need a lot of brain power. I see yeah. it, but they do say that for like for the prime time of a nap, you shouldn't go too much longer than 30 minutes because you can wake up, you can wake up more tired than feeling refreshed because your brain's gone into that new cycle. Something's ringing, trying to, I couldn't hear what you said, Darcel. Darcel? Does that include after holidays, after you eat all that food? Does that <laughs> still <laughs> apply? Um, <clears throat> Can I know? They can pass the that's probably a different yeah. kind of nap that we take after we eat. I don't know if that's really a nap or if that's just a level of food. Yeah. That's that's a coma. To process and digest. Yeah, that's a food coma. That's different than a nap. Yeah. Somebody look up the itis. Look up the itis, huh? <laughs> See? Yeah. One thing we learned today is we ought to well, go do some nap. Where well, I'm from, they call it the itis. They call it what? <laughs> uh -oh. Hello? Uh -oh. Hello? There he is. Yeah, yeah so I would say where y'all, y'all I mean, kind of sedated because uh, where I come from, they call it the itis. 
We're gonna look up the itis next time and we'll have some true facts on why do we get sleepy after we eat. No, it's after we exercise our mouth. Oh, that's why. So we've exercised our mouth, we've exercised our hand and our arm. So now we're tired from you out by then. You get the recovery time after that, huh? Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. And I need those uh, 30 to 40 minutes to boost my brain power so that it can tell me that I need to go and get my pie and my cake now. Yeah. <laughs> and I have the perfect clothes for you to wear. Right? You we do all that. Zaya Fly girl while we do all that. Zaya Fly girl. This is a fly girl. There was a, a matter of fact, while we're talking about the itis, there was a, a, a cartoon called The Boondocks. Uh, uh -huh. And they had a whole episode about the itis. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, uh, the grandfather had a restaurant and the restaurant you had you didn't pay for the food you pay for the sofa or the bed that was next to your table you reserve the bed for an hour or two <laughs> and you go to sleep after you eat <laughs> <laughs> yes wow wow oh, too much right i thought it was a great idea final fun fact our final fun fact is we are going to see everyone next week. <laughs> we, no, so we, we, have, we have Darcel here. So you did not show something that was manly. Oh, Zaya has men active wear too. No. Oh, good. He gave oh, us yeah, the facts Sissy. about the Florida man. So you got to ask him, Sissy, did you pull it up? This was for the man. What happened? What was the big event? April 17, 1964. Oh, yeah, we started with that one. And he answered yeah, the question off the top. He got it? He got oh, it. I was zoomed out. So he got it. Yeah, what he got was it? it? What's the answer? What was it? See if you remember. Were you paying attention? The mistake was uh, released. The what was? The Ford Mustang was released. Yes. Oh, wow. I should know that one. <laughs> yep. The first muscle car. <laughs> yep. I'm going to go ask Oh, yeah. Because then he went into telling us about the other one. Yep. We did. So, tell a oh. friend, tell a friend. Fun fact Friday. We're going to start around 6. We'll start recording around 16. And just fun facts. Give us ideas. You could text them to me. Comment below if you have any ideas of topics you think, eh, I've always wondered about this, or is this really a fact? We will search it, trust me. We will look and try to find a fact that is related to it that you may not think is true, but we're gonna find one that makes it true. Um, and that's it. Um, thank you for Zaya Flyer Girl. I will put your poster <laughs> information down below the videos when I post it. So if anyone's interested, she has the exercise wear. And we look forward to seeing everybody next week, next Friday. All right. This was fun, guys. Thank you. Stay Thank safe. You. Watch your hands. Bye. Watch your hands. Watch your hands. Bye. 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 Deuces. Deuces. <laughs>